Président. Merci. Thank you, Madam President. The crisis we are facing is huge and unprecedented, and my first thoughts go to uh, all citizens across the world, in particular those in Europe, who have been directly or indirectly affected by the virus. I'd like to uh, 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 congratulate all those citizens around the world who are doing all they can to provide the necessary services, and also those who have mobilized to ensure that there is as much uh, uh, support and activity as possible, including uh, in terms of transport. The European Council gave us a, a task. Our task is based on two pillars. First of all, we have to submit a roadmap to the European Council, a roadmap uh, listing a number of measures to uh, uh, fight the crisis. Uh, the President has already gone through them, and the aim is to have an approach that is as coordinated as possible, so solely but surely we can lift the uh, exceptional restriction measures that have been adopted at national level over the last few weeks. These are exceptional measures, uh, exceptional restrictions that affect our daily life in the European Union and worldwide. And they impinge on our basic freedoms. Our basic freedoms have been directly affected by uh, these restrictive measures. And uh, there have been, uh, there's been a huge uh, him impact on the economy, on our social life. And this is something that's going to affect us over the next few months or even the next few years. And that's why... Uh, as uh, 27, we feel that it is essential to uh, work together. The recommendations are presented here are based on common sense and based on scientific data, uh, and that reflects uh, the trust and confidence we have in our advisers. All this feeds in uh, to a process that will allow us to move forward, not in the same way in all countries, not... In uh, but so that we move forward together and uh, combat this crisis. And for myself, is the recovery strategy. How is it possible to work together with the different European institutions and with the member states in order to be able to tackle uh, this uh, huge challenge that we need to face uh, together? We will have next week again a European Council via a video conference. It will be the fourth one in a few weeks, in only a few weeks. And our goal is to open a strategic discussion uh, in order to see how is it possible to gather together to take some very strong decisions and to open the process in the midterm, in the longer term, in order to be able to guarantee again more welfare for the European citizens in the next weeks, the next months, in the next uh, years. In my opinion, we need to tackle four chapters, four uh, strong points uh, that could be uh, cornerstones for a strong recovery strategy. The first one is, of course, the single market. Le premier point est le marché. The first point is the single market. The single market is a, a common good uh, belonging to the European Union. It's at the very heart of our economic development and therefore uh, uh, promotes uh, economic and social cohesion. But the single market has been severely hit by the measures that, that have been adopted, P totally justified measures, of course, but the aim is to uh, get the single market back on track so that it can work properly. And we should also look at ways of improving the single market, make the necessary adjustments so that it becomes stronger focusing in particular on industrial strategy. The Commission has come forward with some very useful proposals on this. And we mustn't forget the network of small and medium-sized businesses. Uh, they're absolutely crucial uh, if uh, the European project is to be successful. And uh, when it comes to the single market, let's not forget the digital agenda. 
and also the European Green Deal, uh, the climate challenge. Uh, these are essential levers uh, now more than ever when it comes to ensuring a proper uh, uh, transition uh, in order to rise to this challenge. Uh, chapter, in my opinion, that we need to discuss with the colleagues uh, in the European Council and with the support of the European Commission is the need, the absolute necessity to develop a massive uh, investment strategy. And I agree with the Commission. I think that the next European budget, the next seven years European budget, is a key element in order to succeed. We need also to use the different tools we have in our hands. Also, the European Investment Bank can be a very essential tool in order to focus on our priorities, to be current with our priorities and to develop a very strong investment uh, strategy in the next months, in the next years. And we need to see how is it possible from the European perspective, but also with the support of uh, all the member states to be effective and to be successful uh, in this uh, very essential uh, strategy. The third uh, pillar, uh, in my opinion, in order to, to succeed in a global recovery strategy is not to forget uh, the external responsibility of the European Union. And you know, as European Union, we have a very strong uh, external uh, uh, ambition. We consider that it's important and essential uh, for us to play a stronger role at the international level. And you know that as European Union, we are a strong promoter of uh, the multilateralism. Nous pensons que le multi we believe that multilateralism is uh, an added value uh, when it comes to addressing these global challenges. We've seen this once again. Uh, uh, this uh, pandemic uh, has affected uh, the whole world, not just a, a certain region. So we need a global response. And that's what we're endeavouring to do together with the Commission. We intend to assume our responsibilities in the G7, in G20, for example, by focusing, channeling financial resources uh, to uh, finding vaccines and uh, other medicines as quickly as possible, and that these would then be accessible to the world as a whole, not just to a privileged uh, part of the world. And when it comes to the international uh, stage, I would like to underscore the importance of a strong partnership with Africa. This is essential. Uh, European leaders, together with African leaders, have uh, called for uh, a mobilization of uh, uh, health-related measures in Africa. And this also relates to uh, the debt burden on Africa. What can we do to relieve that debt in the medium and long term? So basically, we need to uh, adjust our Africa strategy and bring it on to uh, a, a, par a partnership between equals, um, either through the digital agenda or the Green Deal. Uh, in the European Council that we, that we need uh, to, to have, in my opinion, is the resilience and the governance. How is it possible, from the European perspective, to learn the lessons? Uh, it's a key uh, issue, in my opinion. How is it possible for us to be stronger after this crisis? How is it possible to show more unity, to show more solidarity, and to be able to give the best possible answers? There are certainly des leçons à apprendre. Clearly, there are lessons to be learned when it comes to crisis management from the European point of view. And we also need to learn uh, how, be how to coordinate better uh, in terms of our actions. And we want to be able to rise to the challenge, uh, uh, the challenges that we face. Um, by way of conclusion, I would say the following. Uh, the heart that beats at the, the heart of Europe is based on solidarity, sharing, um, uh, have the necessary resources available so that we can react uh, on the basis of common sense, so that we can have a vision for the medium and long term and offer uh, European citizens uh, uh, proper answers. Uh, thank you very much.